Hey everybody, so the rogue player and bard player decided that they were going to make characters based on Miguel and Tulio and just started stealing everything that was and was not bolted down, including the other player's shit. Like dice just started going missing left and right and then we found out and a huge fight ensued and now one of them is uh, currently trying to cough some of those dice up after the barbarian player shoved him down his throat. So session's canceled, I guess. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. it was a really violent, like five minute exchange. Let me tell you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I zoned out for a little bit there and then I heard shove the dice down his throat. And I, I just I was like, oh, oh. yeah, didn't. Uh, OK, <laughs> you, you, you woke me up a little bit. there. <laughs> I'm good to get your game face off. We're recording, but yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm here. I'm present. I'm just not here. You know what I mean? I'm here, but I'm not here. But really, if you do enough so LSD, insert the picture of the person like looking over like on like on a beach and it just says, damn, <laughs> damn. But, you know, really, at the end of the day, you take enough drugs. Is anyone really here? <laughs> I mean, you were before the drugs. so <laughs> Debatable, debatable. You were at least at one point. <laughs> sure. Debatably. Have you seen, uh, welcome, by the way, welcome to the Sessions Cancelled podcast, hey, up, where yeah. we talk about random bullshit. We talk about things, uh, things and me, stuff. Isaiah. Uh, no, cease. I only just started watching that podcast again, and I'm still mad. What, what podcast? What? The the things and stuff, stuff and things. That's the that's the um, Midnight Local podcast with Greg and, and oh, God. Oh, I, f- I forgot they even, I, that wasn't, I wasn't pulling from there. I completely forgot about that. Oh. I started watching them again and I went back and watched their Matrix video and Greg gave some like annoying takes in the Matrix. And I'm telling like, you, Chief, you want to get mad. Watch the Everything Everywhere All at Once video. Want to get mad. I, I, I haven't watched that movie yet, so I it feel doesn't like I won't matter. get as mad. No, you'll still get mad. Trust me. I fucking I flipped Four. the lid because my my rate <laughs> stupid tangent. But here we are. My rage it, for those wondering, we're referring to a YouTuber online, a guy we watch from time to time. He has a podcast. They talk about movies every once in a while. They did a video about everything everywhere at all at once. I got very, very mad about it. Uh, my criticisms and the reason I got really mad about it, though, had nothing to do with him disliking the movie. I don't care if he likes, you know, like whatever. He's allowed to dislike the movie. The things that I got mad about were everything around his like logic and reasoning of which there was none. <laughs> yeah, pretty much pretty much how I felt about the Matrix, his review of the Matrix as well. I, I can see like, that. God, fucking Philip Snobs, I can't. Uh, anyway, uh, something about drugs. What are we talking about? I guess it didn't matter. Anyway, so as you could probably assume by the intro, because they're always topical kind of until they aren't, uh, until they aren't, until they aren't, uh, we're, we're really getting close to wrapping up, uh, the, 2024 class revisions and you know we we may uh, have some inside information that i didn't actually look at so we're not going to use it um and this what? week we're looking oh, at what wait rogue what? and bard inside information we, 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 we may or may not have a copy of the php but the i didn't oh. look at it so oh yeah nah i didn't look at it either it was so scuffed i was like yeah i'm good <laughs> it is I, I took it to, okay that's not true i took a quick a quick gander it's it, scuffed it was really scuffed it was it was it so was readable sc- but i was like <laughs> uh, it was a degree of scuff that yeah it was a degree of scuff what isaiah is talking about is a uh, somewhat uh, a friend of ours found uh, uh um a pdf of the 2024 hand, uh, player's handbook but it's just a bunch of really it's not a scan it's no it's not scans it's pictures of the pdf and it's a lot of really <laughs> scuffed pictures so it looks like shit yeah. it's it's real rough yeah but yeah we did not uh we did not actually reference that no and i mean we don't I'm really need lie. to either so it's fine there's nothing like other oh, than I, some I was very say, minute wording minutia type bullshit it's fine yeah, I mean, I was I was going to say I was cleaning drywall off of my everything for the last two days. So, uh, yeah, it's been it's been a fun you. two days. 
we finally got the leak in my closet fixed in the uh, bathroom closet and they had to cut a huge chunk of the old drywall out and replace it because it was bad and they didn't put plastic sheeting over my bathroom door so even uh, though the bathroom door was shut drywall dust got all over my everything do you have any idea how much fucking drywall dust is in my fans and computer filters the work i'm gonna have to do on this some bitch on saturday <laughs> yeah i mean yeah a lot it would be my guess yeah I, it's fine i'm not molding anyway this week we're looking at rogue and bard um they did pretty good they i i do Bro, i i'm so happy about that's not true I, about two i love bard bard's awesome I was going to say, there's um, two particular things with Bard that I'm just absolutely full masked about. I feel like I know which ones. Probably. But we're going to save that to the second half because uh -huh. we're going to start with Rogue. Yeah. And uh, before we do, though, Josh, tell the people what they got to know. They got to know that um, AG1 is a waste of money and a stupid fucking supplement and stop buying things from advertisements that you hear on like YouTube and podcasts and stuff, because usually all the money that those companies spend on those advertising, you know, campaigns don't go back into the product. They just go on advertising campaigns. So like Raycons and Vessies and Mansc Manscaped and all that shit. Just stop. Just don't do it. Just don't. And AG1's fucking stupid. It's just vitamins. It's vitamins in liquid form. What the sweet mystical <laughs> fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Were you hurt AG recently? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just really sick and tired of hearing about Vessi and uh, what, what better help Vessi, Raycons, uh, Manscape, AG1. Uh, what's the other? What's the fucking? What's the fucking stupid? The VPN one that everybody's shilling. God, what's the fucking VPN one? I can't remember the the, the VPN. I'm just sick and tired of hearing them. Hmm. What's the VPN called? Fuck. What's the VPN? Uh, there's a couple. Surfshark, Express. Express uh, VPN. Nord. That's the one. That's the one that spends too much money on advertising. Jesus. Anyway, uh, that, all that yeah, aside, though, what you can do for entirely free, and this isn't shilling because we don't get a kickback from it. Well, I mean, you can't. Never mind. Just hit the subscribe button. Just pause for a minute and hit the subscribe button. That's. You don't even have to pause. Actually, it's 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 right under the vi if you're on if you're on YouTube, it's right under the video. You hit the button. If you're on something like Spotify, you could just you could just go to the page, and Spotify will minimize, so the audio thingies the audio players at the bottom, and you just hit follow on the page. Yep, don't even have to stop listening to my dulcet tones. Yeah, and if you if you do subscribe, if enough of you do, we will get a kickback on it, and then we can get Bridge a but, Brett a slightly larger cage. Yeah, and a slightly better uh, internet connection. Yeah. He keeps no, asking, I need but the better I don't think he really needs I get it. like 12 megs on the down out here, bro. This shit sucks. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we send Brett his packets by by snail mail, though. Like, I, I think I think we have a rat that sends him the data packets. Oh, I think I have seen that rat before. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So maybe we'll get like a slightly faster rat or something or a pigeon. Maybe we'll get him a pigeon. Hmm, that's a thought. Wait, but he's in the basement. How's anyway. the pigeon going to get in the basement? We don't. That, that basement doesn't have any windows. Pigeon can walk down. We'll figure steps. it out. I suppose he can. <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't they be able to? Because <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't think of it. How's the pigeon going to open the door? I'm not keeping that fucking door open all the time. You know how much AC costs? That's true. We'll think about it. Cat door we'll for figure the pigeon. It out. Pigeon uh, door, if you will. So, I just, why you, I'm, I'm getting a temperature check from you. What do you think of the new Rogue? Um, it's been a hot. It's been a, it's been a minute. Um, but from what I'm remembering, because I'll be honest, I didn't get a chance to look back today. Uh, from what I'm remembering, I liked. I think I liked everything. I don't think I remember having any particular complaint about Rogue. Really? Okay, interesting. But. That's worth pointing out that Rogue is also the, the the class that I think probably needed the least work in like the entire game. So, you know, for them to true. make it That's worse yeah. would have been it, it would have they would have had to really go out of their way to make it worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. All right. Fair enough. So we'll, we'll just kick this off from the top. Um, is, well, is there a thing that I'm forgetting? The weapon that Master, like, baby. It, it, I, yeah, we'll get there. Uh, okay, okay. So we got weapon mastery, woo! Yep. But like, 
only for dagger and short bow which why would you not just give masteries to any weapon they can be proficient in they are it is with any weapon they're proficient in i i'm pretty sure i only saw on the on the article it only said dagger and short bow i i'm looking at choose two weapons you're proficient with you gain their mastery properties i'm looking at it right now I don't know, boss. As an example of how mastery properties work, let's look at the mastery properties of two iconic rogue weapons, the dagger and the short bow. Oh, that may have been. Right, look, somebody didn't read. I fucking did read it. Leave me alone. I'm just not careful. <laughs> not carefully enough. Apparently, <laughs> apparently not. Anyway, uh, and, the, and the very official book that we have says your training with weapons allow you to use the mastery properties of two kinds of weapons of your choice with which you have proficiency, such as daggers and short bows. Mm. When you finish a long rest, yeah. you can change the kind of weapons yeah. you choose. For example, you could switch to using the mastery properties of scimitars and short short swords. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, this yeah. weapon mastery is it's they're good. Still good. We, we've talked about them quite a bit. Still, still fun. good. Yep. Still good. Uh, still next, fun. we have Thieves Cant, which I think is really funny because not only does it now give you the Thieves Cant language in like a uh, uh, cipher, but now you just get another language, which I'm going to be real, doesn't solve the issue with Thieves Cant, really. I mean, what? What do you feel like the issue with the it doesn't get used like ever like it's in it's in almost no official modules uh there isn't a lot of times where it's used in gameplay i don't feel don't mm -hmm. get me wrong it's really cool flavor it's a really neat ability my but it never really comes up so i can't speak on modules but my counter argument would be that it's the kind of thing that it doesn't hurt for the rogue to have. Uh, like, it, it's the kind of thing that doesn't hurt to have, and it doesn't take anything away if it's there, so I don't see any reason that it really needs to be fucked with very much, you know what I mean? Like, I think it's fine the way it is, for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's fair. Like we've said, we talked about this before. If it if it gives you nothing and you lose nothing, there's no reason to remove it. Fair enough. Basically, um, yeah. I just feel like, and uh, to be fair, they might have put this in the new DMG. I don't know. We don't have the book, but I feel like I want to see more official examples of these can't being used, so it can give DMs more of a reason to put it in the game, so that it that becomes a more common parlance, so the ability becomes better. I like that you get the extra language. That's pretty sick. But like, uh -huh. I think it's funny that this thing is, is it just thieves can't feels like an artifact from old, older editions that they're just like, well, it's iconic. So we're not going to get rid of it. Uh, yeah. I mean, something being iconic and keeping it around, though, I don't think is inherently a problem. I, I, I don't know that like, I don't know if thieves can't was any more useful in old editions either, though, like. I think it's always just been kind of a fun little thing you throw at the rogue or the thief, as it used to be called. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's ever been like super crazy important, you know, maybe back in the day. Obviously, I wasn't uh, playing on a lot of those older editions, or any of them, in fact. Uh, but I could see a, a space for some guidance in like in the uh, in the DMG about like here GM here's a way you could utilize these camp or here's an idea I it does it, your point that it's not in adventures at all I do think is kind of funny it does feel like it should be in adventures I mean not all of them but an adventure like water deep dragon heist for example could definitely could see that being used um I will say something that's kind of fun, and maybe this would be something that could get people's ideas going. They didn't do this in 5e, and they'd have to do it in like another book or whatever. Uh, but in Tales of the Valiant, um, there's a in the rogue uh, in the rogue section of the book, it actually has uh, 
some like example symbols of what thieves can't kind of looks like. So it has like a little door drawing and it's like secret door icon or closed eye icon. It, and it kind of talks about how you could utilize it a little bit in the actual class itself. Nothing crazy, but it sort of mentions it briefly. So something like that they could do too. Uh, yeah, but yes, like said, it is I funny that they just—I like, just, it is funny they just slap another language on that sucker. Yeah, like they're like, because I think they know. They think they know that it's like, well, we got to give them something, you know. But they already get expertise, sneak attack, and weapon mastery at level one. So, like, did thieves can't need any kind of an extra something when they're already getting a bunch of shit because they're fucking rogues? I don't know, but apparently the design team thought that. That's what I'm saying. Like, ro- this, is, this is what I mean. Like, rogues, again, rogues, like, needed the least help in the entire game, you know? Like, they, they didn't need assistance. <laughs> but, yeah. Here we go. I guess... Uh, it's weird. The thing. next thing I wanted to go on. I just it's just weird. It's just weird that they were like, we're going to just completely like we're just going to j- jerk rogues rogues off a little bit more, even though they didn't need it. No, not like know. literally not at all. Yeah. Um. So. Cunning strikes, right? Level uh-huh. five rogues get this thing called cunning strikes. This is an entirely new thing. Yes. It's an entirely new thing. And I'm going to be honest, I'm getting a little tired of this. Uh-huh. Does every physical fighter need battle master maneuvers? And they're all basically the same ones of like tripping or not like some way of knocking someone prone. It's all the same shit. Like. I don't know. Are we skipping over? There was a couple of things before. Oh. Subclass. Is there? I mean, nothing. Well, so. Uh, oh, I mean, sub, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about sub, that yeah. again. Steady uh, aim was steady from, aim. Uh, from I was just, yes. St- steady aim is now bait part of base rogue. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um. Uh, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, well, one of them is poison, which is new. That's the thing that the rogue can do specifically. Uh, for the cunning strikes, which I think is worth mentioning. Uh, because I don't. Yes, think it, it is. Anyone it else is can do that. new. Uh, there's yes, the trip is knocking someone prone, and then withdraw is monks just to disengage. Yeah, monks disengage. It's step of the wind, basically. I mean, here's what I'll say: Do we need to give every marshal's battle master maneuvers? Not necessarily, per se. But do we need to? Do I think it helps? Does it? Does it help? make things more interesting if marshals have little things they can choose to do on their turn in the way that spellcasters pick and choose what spell to use for their turn yes i i think i think that adds to the fun um but i see what you mean where it is like we're just kind of giving everyone the same thing. I will I will admit that the creativity in terms of what cunning strikes could potentially be and what the brutal critical or not or what the brutal strikes on barbarian could like they're not as exciting as they could be. I'll give you that one, but I don't know. I'm still kind of happy they're there just if for again for no other reason than to give marshals a little like something to think about, you know, some brain juice to use. Yeah. Well, s- so here's the bitch of it, right? I am too. I'm happy that they're there. I just don't like that fighter is losing a, like a chunk of its needs for niche protection. And given that it's already, you know, it's not the simplest class in the game, but it is the most basic by far. It's I feel like it's losing a huge chunk of its a distinguishing identity, which is being really good at at controlling the battlefield, you know. I mean, counter argument, only for one subclass. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, yes, it only, is only one, for one subclass. subclass. I, I, yeah, like yes. There is a degree of of uh, things getting a little weird because of niche protection and giving everybody all the same tools. As a spellcaster has already had this problem, so you know, I don't think the. I don't think the issue is inherently giving everyone like maneuver type abilities. I think the issue is that all of the maneuver type abilities that we got all feel a little too similar. I think that's the problem. 
you know, it, it feels a little weird because it's like, yeah, we gave so Brutal Critical. It was like Brutal Critical isn't, you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess people found Brutal Critical dissatisfying. I don't agree with that, but OK, people find Brutal Critical dissatisfying. So we changed it so that it's sort of more reliable and, and more satisfying to use hypothetically. But the things we gave them in replace of the Brutal Critical aren't necessarily like straight. Well, it's a little bit of damage, but it's also just like, yeah, it's like maneuvery things that feel very fightery. So I get it and I don't get it at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I don't It's hard to say. I think another thing is, is that like, I almost feel like the barbarian ones. Can I just say, I almost feel like something that would have made brutal critical feel a lot more fun is if you could just like make a guaranteed crit happen like once or twice a day. Yeah. Just make it. I I think that would have been awesome. Guaranteed crit hit the barbarian just swings with all his might cannot miss. And then and like like you leave the first part of Brutal Critical where it's like you get extra damage when you crit and then you add an addendum where it's like once per long rest, you could just get a fucking crit, like auto crit, just bam. Or maybe once per short rest. Yeah, and I don't think it'd be that hard considering that rogues level 18 ability now is you auto crit like. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I agree. I don't know. And for Barbarian, it's a little frustrating, too, because, you know, like the brutal strikes are cool. Um, but like, they're really basic and like, you can do them every round. It's like, oh, you push or pull, uh, or you, you know, you push someone or slow them down. They have disadvantage and they can't make op attacks. Uh, and then someone else can get a plus five. You're like, oh, those are neat. But I mean, don't, like I said, I don't know. I feel like they don't focus enough on actually hitting like they're cool in theory, but they're like, for me, I want, uh, I want like the weapon mastery stuff. Like give me a, a, a brutal strike. That's like cleave, right? It just hits every enemy that I choose within five feet of me to do like a spin to win maneuver. Yeah. Or, well, like, like I said, I don't think the problem is so much their existence. It's just that the ones we got are a little basic. Yeah. They need a little more spice. I'm pretty sure we were sauce. praising these last time, but. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure we were praising them last episode, but now that I've read the rogue ones, I'm well, I'm we were, well, we were praising like, their addition as a fun thing, but I don't remember saying that the options themselves were particularly exciting. I just liked them as an idea. You know what I mean? Fair enough. I, I, unless, unless I did, pra- I don't think I praised them specifically. If I did, then that is a little weird if I did, because they're, they're, I never felt they were super exciting. Yeah. Um, you're doing the um fuck me so yeah they're they're just basic and like yeah poison is cool i'll give you that i like the poison it's one. a neat thing it's 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 i talk about it later in my notes the poison it's, one it feels rogue-y. useless after like level 10 well but it is what it is okay because it's poison okay knockout is cool but we can't see this, but, this is the problem we can't say it becomes useless useless after level 10 because we don't know I mean, no, we don't. Because but unless we still have a seen- large swath of the monster manual has been redone to make poison way more effective. Well, I don't think it has. I'm going to be well, real. the entire monster manual has been redone. Yes, it has. But I don't think I don't feel like given what we've seen so far from the classes, I don't feel like we are going to get a complete overhaul of every single monster to have increased vulnerabilities and resistances and immunities and also make poison more effective because you'd you'd be taking a huge chunk of of damage negation out of every fiend a lot of the plants probably zombies so many things are resistant up to immune to poison that it's really good if you're fighting like humanoids but everything else just kind of ignores it. Uh, I would say I agree, except for the fact that we've seen poison pop up in a lot of other places, too, with the classes and stuff. So I'm almost wondering if they are trying to make it more worth it. 
You know, this is the problem. A lot of people are currently, and I know this isn't necessarily what you're doing. This is just a thing I've been seeing pop up online quite a bit where a lot of people are talking about the balance of the 2024 rules and, and all the stuff we're seeing with the classes. And I just, I just am sitting here. I'm like, we, we can't talk about balance. We've only seen half the game. Like we haven't seen the entire other half of the game which is all of the shit the GM could do. Like, we haven't seen the DMG or the Monster Manual. So any discussion of balance and, like, what'll be good or bad is just... I mean, first of all, even if we had seen the Monster Manual at this point and a bunch of new monsters, you know, balance takes... The balance of a game, be it video game or tabletop or anything, it takes time for you to really learn. You know, you got you basically, you have to play to really, truly learn you know what is good and what's bad and what's balanced and what's broken and all that shit but we haven't even seen the other half so like we just we can't we i feel like people are jumping the gun a lot here you know what i mean you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i'd agree with you on that part for sure especially in regards to the spells some way because there's been a bunch of spells changing people like oh my god this is so shit or this is so good it's like all right everybody like chill out chill out like, there are certain things, obviously, where it's, like, pretty clear, but there's a lot of things where it's, like, we gotta... I think we should see how this one shakes out a little. So, I don't know. The poison thing... Yes, 2014, the poison condition and poisoned damage. Not much. But... Who knows? That may change. That may, you know... You know, maybe things will just be resist. Maybe they'll ha- make things less immune and just resistant to poison, so they get advantage and stuff. You know, like there's a lot of ways it could go. We'll see. But it's a uh... yeah. I don't know. I, I get. I get this. I get. Yeah, I mean, I get the sentiment either. Way. I, I I see what you're saying, and and I get it. I, and you're right. I I am sort of going off the assumption that it is. 2014 that we're still working with and it it might change it might completely overhaul the way that we are expecting it to i mean totally we know might. we're getting it's just some degree of overhaul for sure you know like we know they've looked at yeah, every yeah, monster I mean, unless they lied rid of things like legendary actions stuff like that no we are we're definitely we're getting an overhaul i i just don't see it going in that direction that being said that does bring up a a another point which does sort of talk about balance which is that they dropped reliable talent to level seven yes. rather than 11. Yeah. And crazy on one end. This is awesome. This is a really cool buff for rogues. Again, they didn't fucking need it, but it's no, cool. They didn't. My only thing is a lot of people who have seen the player's handbook. And again, this goes back into the talk of balance. There's a, there's a rhetoric sort of being spread, and I don't necessarily disagree, that it, it seems like this edition of the game is going to suck for DMs. And I don't know if it's... I don't know if that's necessarily the truth. I don't know if it's it's going so far as to say that it's going to be bad for them. But with, th- with doing things like removing legendary action in place of extra, uh, extra reactions and then a lot of class abilities taking away monster reactions... You're just taking options away. It, it's like a it's like a veneer of oh this is this new thing that'll be more effective and then you just sort of pluck it in the same I, way that that you know a ranger fighting a beholder just loses access to a third of their class you know. Well, I, I mean yeah, we really I, I've heard people say this too. I, I I'm not even gonna begin to try and comment on this because again, we haven't seen the new DMG or the new monsters or any of the new advice or any of that shit. So like, it's just impossible to say it's going to suck for GMs. And quite frankly, I'm a, I'll am be a hundred percent. I'm going to be unreal engine five with you chief. Five. E already sucks balls to run. It can't suck that much more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't hey, don't say that. Don't say that it, because it, everyone was like, I mean, rogue can't get much worse. Can it? That is actually a rhetoric I saw with the UA. They were like, well, they can't make Rogue worse. Or not Rogue, uh, Ranger worse. Oh, well. They did. <laughs> Again, I think it's debatable whether Ranger's actively worse than his 2014 version so much as it's just a disappointing situation. I don't think it's worse. But either way, it, 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 it can't. 
The game is not changing enough that it's going to get any worse to run. The worst case scenario is it's mostly the same amount of shitty to run, which is still pretty shitty because it's not it's it is a rough game to run. I think that's just like that just it is what it is. This this idea of like, oh, the players are getting super. Pa I think the thing is people are saying this edition's going to get shitty to run because, oh, the players are getting really powerful and the players are getting a lot more options, but we don't know how much stronger any of the monsters are getting. You know, they may be getting a ton of new shit, too, or they could just be giving the monsters all double hit points and calling it a day, in which case I'm going to cry if that's all they do, because, oh, my God, shoot me. Uh, but I'm really hoping they don't do that. <laughs> you know? No, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping they don't either. I just God, that would suck. Giving bards, uh, sorry, giving rogues a just dedicated I win button at level seven. Like, that's that's tough, bud. Just being like, oh, well, anything below a 10 is just now a 10. Uh, and you're counting for well, at reliable that point, you've talent got plus three prof mod and up to a plus five. So if you've got well, it's worth pointing out reliable talents only for ability checks. It is. So yeah, it's not yeah, really a it, combat it, relevant thing. No, but it is still frustrating knowing that any rogue that any skill that the rogue is proficient in. There's just no chance of failure for them. I mean, not because they can't they can't natural one. Not no chance. A lot. Less. I mean, let's put it this way. If it's a let's say it's a, call it a sleight of hand check or a tool proficiency check to pick a lock at level seven, their proficiencies at, I believe, plus three, which will give them a plus six if uh, because they're an expert in it. Yeah. So they'll have a plus six, plus a plus five. That'll put their skill at a plus 11. And then they can't roll below an 11. So the check is almost always going to be 21, if not higher. It. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of those things, right? It's it's. It's a similar vein to the like era. Krokra used to have infinite flying, so it made dungeons difficult for GMs. That one, I I. I I see that there's a similarity there. I disagree. I think the dungeons thing is a little bit simpler. Something coming down to like being able to make checks to build suspense that not as much. Uh -huh. That's where I'm like, uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I will kind of just have to see. I mean, it's not like this is it, it's already a thing that was in the game, so we've already been dealing with it. It's not like a new thing. It's just now it comes online a little sooner. That Yes, that may or may not shake things up a lot. Hard to say. Yeah, it's it's cool. I'd get I just I am a little worried for. What it's like to run this game, <laughs> I mean, coming out with the new version. 5e has always prioritized the player experience over the GM experience. Whether they say that or not, it has. I just I figured they would. Toss GMs a bone. They, 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 so we haven't seen it yet, but they're claiming that they are really tossing GMs a bone and that the new GMG is quite good. So we'll really have to see when that one hits. They also said that the 2024 Ranger is a completely different class when it's all just Tasha's toss of shit. So they have just lied to us. In That's, the past. I mean, they just bold face lied to us. That one is a rough situation. I will agree. <laughs> But I don't know. We'll see. I, I would like to point out that also those DMG comments haven't been in like a scripted sit down video on the YouTube. It's been like offhand comments at like conventions and stuff and like talking to other people and, and stuff like that. So little different scenario in that regard, too. I suppose that is fair. But yeah, I, I, you're not wrong, though. The Ranger, the, we, we, the Ranger situation was a lot of copium. No denying that. Oh, my God. D the article for Rogue and Bard had the same language. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, it's a little. They're, they're trying to be like got I don't know. So annoying. Yeah, they're like trying to be like funny or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! I just ugh. what was what was one that sent me? There was one that had me reeling. I don't know, but I gotta find it now. <laughs> Stay on task, sir. I'm trying. 
whatever. I'll, I'll take a look. Well, I'll find it by the end of the episode. Probably. Maybe. <laughs> After reliable talent, we have improved cunning strike. Can we stop calling it improved? Please. <laughs> what What would you call it? I don't know. Extra cu just, more cutting I, strike. I just like. I don't know. I mean, I, I it, just wait. It, well, in this case, it is kind of improved, though, because improved cunning strike lets you use two cunning strike options instead of one. It, it, I, is that not improved? I don't I feel like. I, I it does. It works. I just. It just feels really lazy to call everything that gives you more battle masters maneuvers improved. I, <laughs> just give it unique language, please. This is, this like, is kind of a uh, this is kind of a funny hill for you to die on. But all right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It, it, it just I don't know why it just it sends me molding every time I see it. I'm, I'm getting that. Yeah. Just stop. It's not fucking hard. Anyway, devious strikes. See, that's cool. I like that. It's still a cunning strike, but there's it's different. You have more of them. So it's, it's devious different. strike. They could have done that, but they were like, improve cutting strike. No. Look, naming, <laughs> Fuck you, listen, naming abilities is hard. Jeremy, cut this shit out, dude. That, Damn, he said, Jeremy, I'm calling you out directly. Jeremy H. Crawford. I don't know what your middle name is. Cut this shit out. <laughs> By the way, side note, um, they do. Uh, 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 once again, the article being goofy. Uh, they do still have evasion, by the way. They didn't take away evasion. They do still have one. What the fuck is Jeremy Crawford's middle This is important. <laughs> it is to me now. Leave me alone. Okay. Oh, does he just not have one? I mean, he certainly oh, does. Yeah, so it's I probably not easy to find, but I would be very surprised if he didn't. Someone, someone send Mr. Crawford a tweet and ask him what his middle name is. Okay. So I can hit him with the federal. The, the full government. <laughs> yeah. All right. E, Jeremy E. Crawford. Cut this shit out. Okay. <laughs> anyway. I like it. Removed Blind Sense, which is kind of a shame because I, I like the flavor on that one. Yeah. Uh, I know it wasn't great, but it, I liked it. Yeah. Instead, we got Slippery Mind. Uh, Slippery Mind gives you proficiency in charisma as well as wisdom saves. So that's a pretty well solid buff again <laughs> that they didn't need, but... I mean... It. We had Slippery Mind before, it just got improved. No, I know. We gave you... Yeah, yeah. it's not just Wisdom now, it's also Charisma. Yes. Uh, again, did they need this? <laughs> um, You know, you know what's funny, too? So you know how there's that whole thing about, like, uh, half of the saving throws are secondary and half of the saving throws are primary? Yeah. Aren't Wisdom and Charisma both, like, one of the prime, but both primary ones? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just check it. Every hot about half of the high powered spells in the game, charisma. including the power words, are charisma. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, so yes. damn. So they have dex, wisdom. They have all the good ones. Yeah. They have the three good ones. Dex, wisdom, and charisma. They are they are just fast tracking themselves to the best class in the game. Yeah, because intelligent because intelligence, con and strength are not the good ones. Yeah. So yeah. Well, you get con is con's a little bit. Yeah. More it's like common. it's like wisdom. It's it's dex, wisdom, charisma, charisma, con, strength, int. I would say in terms of how much they're used. I think ints usually. I think strength is used. No, because there's like int is is almost exclusively used for like aberrations. True. But strength is used for like some dragons have strength uh, dexes. A lot, most of the physical fighters have strength dexes for like knocking prone or pushing. Uh, Fair enough. Yeah. I, yeah. I, just, I fuck it. I fuck it, man. Let her, let it rock. Let this become you know. Let chaos reign or whatever. Up next, uh, stroke of actually, I do like this one. This one I I, I really really like. I've, I made it sound like I don't like these rogue improvements. I love them. They're sick. I'm just really laughing at the irony that this class is going to be amazing. But on like a different level than everyone else. True. Yeah, in a different way. Uh, 
Stroke of Luck now actually works on all D20 checks and not just attacks or skills, which basically just means that they put it on saving throws as well. And they always count as a crit when you pop it and it comes back on a shorter long rest. That's sick. That is... It's not technically the capstone anymore. Yeah, it is. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, it is. Yeah. This is probably one of the best capstones in the game. This might be the best capstone in the game. Um, that feels rogue. Sh- that feels like rogue shit. I mean, we still Once have an hour. Cl- you can we still have crit. cleric <laughs> cleric still. You do. You, know. you do. That's fair. But like. This one is solid. It's like, eh, fuck it. I crit. Yeah. And there. Oh, that's right. Before it was the DM can do about it. Before it was you turned it into a hit. Now you turn it into a full on crit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, did Stroke of Luck need a buff? <laughs> no! I don't feel like it did. I mean, saving throws, yes. I think adding saving throws is good. Okay, but sure, like, yeah. the crit? The crit one feels... No. Yeah, I don't feel like we needed that, but all right. Yeah. And here's the thing. They stated crit. Yeah. So what does that mean for the language of the game? Because you can't technically crit on skills and saves. But they're stating it's a crit. When you fail a D20 test, it turns into a 20. This means a missed attack roll becomes a critical. Okay. Is that from the the, the book I mean, of hidden lore that I'll, we may I'll or may read not have? It, uh, I'll read it in our very, yeah, I was going to say, I'll check in our very uh, legitimate copy. Uh, you have a marvelous knack for succeeding when you need to. If you fail a D20 test, you could turn the roll into a 20. Once you use this feature, you can't okay. use it again until you finish a short or long rest. So you just turn it into a 20. Okay. 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 So it doesn't specify a crit, but on an attack, obviously that's, you know, Mm -hmm. which is weird. It's worth asking. But so wait, hold on. They simplified the language on that one, huh? Yeah. Cause before it was, if your attack misses, you can make it a hit. Alternative. If you fail an ability check, do you, if you fail an ability check, you can treat the D 20 as a 20. Now it's just all D20 tests. You just automatically turn it into a 20, which covers both the auto hit and the auto succeed. Yeah, okay. So they made the move better and made it easier to understand, which is yeah, kind of impressive. Oh, by the way, we didn't say, but Devious Strikes gives you more new, uh, new cunning strike options. Yes, it just gives you more. Not more uses, like new ones to choose from. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, the one I really like is knockout. Let's succeed on a con save or become unconscious for a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you just do the rogue, you just sneaky bonk him upside the head. Yeah, I, the, the only thing is I just feel like, what is the point of making them reroll the save? That feels very PvP. I don't know why to me, but like, if you're trying to knock out the bad guy to not kill them, like, just don't um, let them wake back up. Because right? in a fight, that would, the fight in a fight that would just be really strong if you could just knock them out and then keep them there. I guess is there. I would think is their logic. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, maybe. I suppose so. Yeah, I, it's one of those things where I can see that getting annoying. Where it's like, but GM, we knocked him out. It is like, annoying. well, he's gonna wake up. It's like. All right, well, I'm going to keep knocking him the fuck unconscious until he stays down then. Yeah. It could definitely get annoying. I won't disagree with you. I mean, shit, that happened. Not that this is Sam's fault, but this happened in fucking magic school where how many times did I knock out that one guy who just kept waking up? And I'm being like, dude, I'm. This brain damage is not worth it. Just stay down. <laughs> this is brain damage. True, true. Remember, remember, folks, there's no such thing as a little brain damage. All brain damage is brain damage. But yeah. Oh, and not this matters, but the epic boon they recommend is uh, boon of the night spirit. Increase ability score by one to a max of 30. You can see in dim light or darkness resistance to all damage except psychic and radiant, and you can become invisible. You gain the invisible condition as a bonus action. Weird that it's psychic yeah. and radiant and not psychic, radiant, necrotic. That's a good point. I didn't even thought about that. I feel like necrotic. Huh. I guess because your darkness is the idea, the night spirit, so necrotic, I guess, because there isn't like shadow damage. 
Yeah, I guess. I guess. Why would you have rate of resistance to force that? Whatever. Psych- uh, psychic, not force. No, no, but like you do have resistance to force. Why? Why not? Oh, why? you do. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Good point. Weird. Uh, subclasses. As for the subclasses, we have Arcane Trickster, Assassin, Soul Knife, and Thief. Yep. They're they're pretty solid. I mean, I, I've sort of spoken my case about the psionic stuff. I I would have preferred Swashbuckler personally to Soul Knife. It's cooler now than it was, but. Uh, yeah, I would have taken Swashbuckler probably. Eh? I don't know which rogue would I have preferred to have seen. Um, what's rogue I you got? I really like Mastermind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully that gets changed and updated. I hope so too. I oh my god, I I read something this week. Tangent, but this is important because it's about D and D. Did you see? Someone at Hasbro equated the subclasses and extra, like add on books for the new player's handbook to be like magic cards insofar they they want there to be power creep. Why? Hold on, I'm gonna find it. What was the justification? Uh, let's see. It's the, the statement is, our final question for Lenzio brought us back to the new core rulebooks and what she hoped fans would take away from it. And quote, I'll use filthy magic terminology first, but when you have a magic card and it's great, you love it and you, and you love it in your deck. And then new one comes out and it's strictly better. You're going to want to use it, Lenzio said. And I think that's what we want to see with core rulebooks. We want folks to look at the warlock and think it's sick. Of course, we're going to want to use this warlock. The blob of annihilation has a skull of a god inside of it. That's pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, I guess you you could interpret that uncharitably, I suppose. But honestly, my interpretation there is is she's just saying we want to make a cooler product, so you buy it. So of course we want to try and make the new version better than the old version. That's that's really my only takeaway on that. Yeah, that's that's just really I I, I get that that might be the intent, but that's very predatory diction that was used and it's strictly better yeah better like, well the, the thing fuck? she said better right she didn't specify what she means by better because people's de- definition of better is going to change right some people might say a class getting you know mechanically more powerful is better but some people might say a class getting more flavorful more interesting abilities is better even if it's not necessarily more powerful right so like Strictly better is kind of a vague term to use. I suppose. Yeah, you can see it like that. Fair enough. Yeah. So like it, it may or may not be By the way, a uh, shitty thing that she said. I don't, it's it's a little up in the air. I can see why yeah. people are. Uh, annoyed way, at I, it. Shout out to Melissa Belladonna, um, YouTuber. She posted that snippet. Would not have found it without her. See. Oh, Melissa. Be cool. Starting from the top with the subclasses. Sorry to get back on topic, but starting from the top. Arcane Trickster. Not much has changed as far as we're aware. The new thing that it's going to allow you to do is to use your cunning strikes with Mage Hand, specifically the trip action. They haven't said if it lets you do it with anything else, but they did call out trip. So that's pretty cool. You can, uh, when you trip someone with the cunning strike, you can use your Mage Hand to trip somebody else within five feet. Uh, five feet is pretty short distance. I don't know why they didn't make it like 10 or 15, but whatever. That is a short distance. Assassin saw some sick fucking upgrades, though. Assassin's playable. Assassin is one of the few things that I was like, yeah, exactly. This needs changing. Yes, Assassin did. Uh, top of the list, it is way easier to trigger Assassin now because not only does it deal extra damage equal to your rogue level and start actually. So this one, I prefer the crit. Because if you crit, you're going to do way more damage. They have, for some reason, lowered that. Why? But it's fine. That is one thing I'm annoyed about. Sorry. Um, but rather than having to surprise the enemy, you now just have to go before them in combat, yeah. 
which is pretty sick because you have advantage on initiative checks now and because deck is gonna dex is gonna be your highest stat anyway typically you're gonna have really high initiative especially if you take something like uh the alert feat or uh, is it alert or mobile that gives you the plus five alert right i believe it's alert anyway you play your cards right you're never not going to go first in combat so you're pretty much always going to proc that assassinate you can also move while you're doing steady aim just which kind of typically wild. once you yeah typically once you proc steady aim you you lose all your movement for the, rest of the turn you proc it to gain an automatic initiative well no you now you just steady get aim it. you declare before you move even yes like you can't have moved at all and then say it so now you can use it whenever you want basically as a yes so as you just have assassin. automatic advantage yeah which means you're you can't not sneak attack unless you already had disadvantage yeah but even then you still can if there's that person's being outnumbered what else do you get oh in venom weapons you get a, a, a yeah in venom weapons which is pretty cool it allows you to ignore resistances for poison yeah which and you deal poison in my yeah. notes i literally went it goes from being poison goes from being useless to mostly useless that's a, that's an uncharitable description it goes from being not very good to potentially to viable to viable yeah yeah usable um it, it is also basically a little like mini smite thing because you do 2d6 poison damage um yes or sorry you do 2d6 poison damage when you do your poison cunning strike uh, so that's cool. Uh, also, I would like to point out, uh, we forgot to mention for Arcane Trickster, uh, they do not have the limitation on abjuration or evocations. Or no, was it? They had to take a yes, illusion. Yes, they've, they've that, removed their school caps. Whatever the school, their, their school yeah, whatever the school uh, limitations were. I forget which ones they were. Mm. They can use whatever spells they want now. That was, that was kind of the main change uh with arcane trickster all right when, when, when we when we finish the subclasses i'm, I'm gonna pose to you a question but <laughs> okay we're gonna save that for a second okay. uh next up we have soul knife yay wait being it De death strike oh shit i forgot about death strike yeah shit. i don't remember what they said about death strike. so when you hit a creature with a sneak attack on your first round of combat the target must make a con save uh or the attack's damage is doubled against the target Ah, all right, that is pretty. Yeah. Yeah, I still okay. I I I just still don't get this. Okay. Why did they remove? Like, okay, so I'm assuming they just turned the original assassinate ability into death strike because it's doubling it rather than doubling it because it, you know assassinate. They kind of crit. split it up between the level three and the level seventeen ability. Yeah, I don't like that. I am typically someone who prefers more dice over more damage, especially when critting is involved because more dice equals more crit damage. Like they could have very easily just said you can also reroll ones to make the crit feel chunkier, you know? Sure. Yeah. I don't know. Just give me more dice. Like this is, this is the same shit with Barbarian. Don't take my dice away. Yeah. Number go bigger. Fair enough. You keep doing this, wizard. The next time you take my dice away, I'm gonna have a shotgun. Soul knife. <laughs> anyway, soul knife. Pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. The soul knives themselves are actually pretty sick. They've got an increased yeah. throwing range, and they can be used for opportunity attacks and weapon mastery stuff. Yeah, they get a they That's get a, cool. they get a weapon mastery. They get the vex property. Oh, yeah, yeah, they get vex. They're basically daggers. I Yeah, they're better daggers. They've never felt like daggers to me. The fuck I always kind of saw be? them as like halo energy swords. Oh, I've like short swords. I have never once thought of them like that. I've always thought of them as daggers. I don't know, they're just so small. Yeah, like daggers. Or like 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 no, I sorry, like the damage on daggers is so small. I want them to be more than just fucking D fours. Well, they are more than. I think they do get stronger. Yeah, at some they do. Point, they get like, stronger. Yeah, either way, I don't, I don't want that. Give me, give me big fucking energy swords from Halo. They deal it. Give me the big punch daggers. They deal a D six by default. 
then why not just make them fucking sword swords and give them the throne property? Because um, knives is more thematic with the rogue. As annoying as it is, because most rogues in 5e don't end up using daggers, daggers is kind of the iconic rogue weapon. That's so weird to me. It is because weird. Bilbo is like the rogue, right? He's the thief. Bilbo had a short sword. Yeah, but he's not. I like, yeah, I guess technically, but I don't think when people think of rogue characters, they don't really think of Bilbo. No, they think of Strider, weirdly. <laughs> I don't even think that. I don't know who people think of by default, but people think of people think of. Did you play the thief games? I didn't play them, but I know I know who you're talking people about. People think of Garrett, really, is that's the kind yeah. of person they think of. They think of Garrett. They think of of Corvo from Dishonored, right? That's what people think of when they think of rogues and like. Yeah, I don't know. They think of the dual daggers thing. People always think of dual wielding daggers for rogues. That's just like that's the stereotype. So also why not? I just also side note, you know, it's it's called soul knife, not soul sword. No. This is weird. This is weird. I think in my head, I I, I, in my head, I always autocorrect it to like soul blade for some reason. And I think it's just because it's soul blade, soul caliber. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. But yes, it is called soul knife. I know. Soul. Do you know how hard it is? I, it's e I either call it soul knife or psi knife. I just I there is no in between. So you just never get it right. Or sorry, soul blade or psi blade. I, I don't. The knife does is never, <laughs> never there. Okay. All right. I don't know. Soul blade sounds cooler. It's got more gravitas than soul knife. Talk about the thief. I do. Thief is actually kind of cool now, except they, they took some shit from Artificer, but it's fine. Well, we're not getting it's basically just Artificer. I mean, it's just Artificer light. We're not getting Artificer cool. in this book, so I know. I know. Although they they've referenced the ugly stepchild. They literally talked about Artificer in this video, and I was so genuinely did. surprised. It did. Yes. It's like I thought there was like a ban on this word. I thought that if you spoke it into it's like Voldemort, you can't say the word Voldemort. Can't say artificer in the in the wizard's offices. <laughs> yeah, but they said it, and the the universe didn't implode. I was very very surprised. I don't know, dog. Just, I don't know. It's just it's... I don't know, big dog. Leave me alone. Anyway, <laughs> so thief can activate uh, magic items as a bonus action now, which is pretty cool. You, they have their own unique cunning str uh, cunning strike called Stealth Attack, which allows you to remain hidden after attacking. The Use Magic Device ability has changed quite a bit. It gives you an extra attunement slot, bringing yep. you up to four. You can uh, use magic items without burning their charges. You have a chance. Uh, up you have to a, a chance amount. to not burn their charge. A chance. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, they have a chance to do it without burning a charge. And uh, spell scrolls have become uncapped for you. I was really hoping that spell scrolls were just going to be uncapped for everyone anyway. No, sir. Because I really hate the way that Wizards does spell scrolls. And it was one of those changes. Everyone already does it this other way anyway, Wizards. Just take credit for it like you did everything else. <laughs> oh. No, sir. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make firm statements right now. If uh -huh. You could be the greatest DM on the planet. But if you don't just let players use spell scrolls, I, you're a nerd. You know that technically <laughs> scrolls do work both of technically scrolls work both ways. You do know this, right? Uh, no, you don't have the spell scroll. If you don't have the spell in your spell list, you can't cast the scroll. You can't cast the spell scroll. Spell scrolls are not the only scrolls in the game. This is so like there are there are technically there are very few, but they exist. Uh, there is, I believe, a scroll of protection, for example. Uh, there are scrolls in the game that do not have an associated spell and anyone can use them. So like those do exist technically. Checking this right now. It's a thing. 
There's there's the scroll of protection uh, in the DMG. There's the scroll of Tarask summoning, for example. Like there's very few, but they exist technically. So like, it is sort of a thing. It's just that they never ever put any other form of scrolls in the game. But yeah. Yeah. There's okay. Let's see. There's scroll of the comet, scroll of Tarask summoning. Yeah. Scroll of Protection. That's it. Yes. I didn't say- All right, my point still stands then. If I'm you don't saying, let everyone cast spell scrolls, you're a nerd. My point is that you could you could hand out scrolls that aren't necessarily spell scrolls and still like do both. Um it is worth so the 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 use magic device ability. You can use any spell scroll using intelligence as your spell crafting ability for the spell. If the spell is a cantrip or a first level spell, you can cast it reliably. If it contains a higher level spell, you make an arcana check. Okay. Huh. That makes me think, the wording there makes me think there is some changes with how spell scrolls work. I don't know. We're not, not going to look into this right now. But I, yeah. I understand why there's some limitations on it. Although scrolls have actually gotten a lot more useful, do you know do you know why? I do not. The rules for casting multiple spells in a turn has changed. Oh. So uh the original wording was if you cast a spell that has the casting time of or if you cast a leveled spell, right? That was the original wording. Mm-hmm. The new wording is if you cast a spell with a spell slot. Uh, that you can, or sorry, the new wording is, sorry, specifically, the wording is you can only cast one spell with a spell slot per turn. So, for example, if you had a, uh, if you had a, I don't know, a scroll of fireballs, you could cast Misty Step as your bonus action and then uh, use a scroll of fireballs as your action. Interesting. Because the scroll. Also, wait, hold on. I scroll believe scroll does not burn a spell slot. No, it doesn't. But I think that's because using a magic item counts as a magic action. Yes. Just like casting a spell is now a magic action. Yes. You cannot take. But no, no, no. So it, unless you so have the magic like, haste, you can't. No, 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 no. It doesn't take up your action. The magic action is is. The magic action is the catch all for like using magic items and stuff like that. It'll say like you have to use your magic action or whatever. But if a spell is like a spell like Misty Step where it specifies it's a bonus action is still just a bonus action. Mm, Okay, so you could Misty Step Fireball basically. Gotcha. Or if you're a warlock, for example, and you have a bunch of invocations that give you spells that you use without using spell slots. You could do Misty Step, you know, Misty Step Hunger of Hadar on some bitch or whatever. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Uh, So that has made scrolls significantly more useful. That is, yeah, okay, fair enough. So, yeah, I understand why there's a limitation on scrolls. I think they could, I think it's too restrictive in 5e, but I don't think it should be necessarily totally unlimited. I guess I no not even I I just uh, the only restriction I see putting on it is a level restriction obviously don't let a level two player cast gate but they can with scrolls that's the point of a scroll but that should be the only that's what I'm saying is that should be the only restriction is like if you're not powerful enough in general to cast a spell you can't cast a spell so scrolls are just extra ammo you're saying or they should just be extra ammo no, like let let a let a level ten fighter cast fireball. Just don't let them cast power word kill. Like they they will be extra ammo for casters, but they allow physical fighters to cast spells. Sure. That way you can do the stuff where it's like, uh, like the the scene in Castlevania where Sypha and Trevor got to distract the vampires while Alucard carves the runes. Although he's not strictly a caster, it's kind of like that. Sure. Yeah. My, well, like I said, hand out scrolls that uh, aren't spells <laughs> and just 
do s- similar things. Instead of well, yeah, uh, that's that thing. Th- that's the fucking bullshit where it's like, ah, you see, you can't dispel or you can't counterspell this one guy's version of fireball because it's not a spell; it's an ability. It's a spell-like ability, so you can't counterspell. It. It's that bullshit. I mean, yes, but I'm just saying, if like, if you want to, add, if you want to give your a fighter the ability to use fireball, and you don't necessarily want to fuck with how the scroll, like the scroll spell scroll rules work currently, you could give your fighter. A scroll of explodey beads that does something conspicuously close to fireball. You know what I mean? I guess. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not saying it's necessarily like the best method. Or I'm just saying it's an option. Anyway, back to rogue. <laughs> back to rogue. Uh, actually, that's about it. That's this pretty much the last thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they 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 get they, they uh, untapped. Level seventeen, they get thieves, thieves reflexes. Uh, they get they get two turns on the first round of any combat. Just, oh yes, they get that. That's pretty fun. It's, just, it's fun, and again, Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. Holy shit, dude! Yes, sir. I wonder if they still have the they can just take shit out of your hands ability. I don't know. Because I'm not going to lie, that's one of the few abilities where I was like, no, this is dumb. Because it's you, you either use it as a, the rogue just runs around taking all the goblins' weapons away, yep. and then the goblins have no weapons, and you murder them all horribly. Or it's a PvP thing, where the thief is just taking players' weapons away. Or, like, you're just going to take away Lord Soth's fucking, like, greatsword or whatever. Like, it's just, it's really goofy that you could just do it, you know? Yeah. Fair enough. I, I, I don't. I don't have a. Ca- I really sound like a hater right now. I'm. N- <laughs> I don't have a counter argument. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not, but also I am. I yeah, it, pretty much. Like I'm. I, I'm not. I have beef with old thief. Let's put it that way. That, that's about as far as it goes. I think old thief sucked. It wasn't fun. It had bad flavor and and. and the abilities that had were really cool. Didn't make any fucking sense for a thief. Well, it had a couple of cool abilities and then a lot of goofy kind of. Yeah. Now moving on to everybody's uh, the best class favorite. in the game. Yeah. Yeah. I said it. I disagree. Moving on to flamboyant for life. We got bards. <laughs> and no, they're sick. They're they're so dope. Yeah, they have made bards really cool. When I thought they were just kind of okay. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I I feel like that contradicts think what you've said before about bards. But okay. I I they're fun. I just like as far as the interesting stuff they could do mechanically. I was not hundred percent vibing with. Well, uh, you know. Uh, they uh, most of their mechanical shortcomings have been pretty shored up at this point. Yeah, you know they. Ha- yeah, <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> I mean, uh, shit. Starting from the top, Bardic Inspo. Uh, so it's no longer a reaction, as far as I'm aware. It is once again a preemptive thing, but it's now an hour rather than ten minutes. Wait, no, isn't it? Is it? Didn't they? Now, if it did the alternative, not. You can check the book of forbidden lore. I, the, the, the forbidden book. I am checking the forbidden book. I am gonna do them. I like how we said we weren't going to, but like it's right here. Um, it's right here. Yeah, we, we might as well. <laughs> As a bonus action. Okay, yeah. As a bonus action, you inspire another cre- creature within 60 feet of yourself who can see or hear you. Uh, the creature gains a bark inspiration. Um, within the next hour, when the creature fails a d20 test. Oh, that's right. That was the change. So it's, uh, you don't have to declare the bardic inspiration. So, like, the way it works currently is you have to um, say, I'm going to use my bardic inspiration die on this check ahead of time before you know the result. You could do it after the roll, but before the GM tells you the result was it was one of those weird things. Uh, now, 
when you fail a d20 test, you can roll your bardic inspiration die and add the number rolled to the d20, potentially turning the failure into success. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, because the, the idea is that you don't have to waste it now. You know if you yes, failed it. And then yes, you, you can't waste it because the, the GM will tell you you failed the check and then you go, OK, I would like to add my bardic inspiration. Whereas before you would roll a 15, for example, and go, that might be a fail. I'm not sure. And you had to decide yourself because the GM couldn't declare whether it was success or failure. You had to decide before they said that. That's the difference. Are you ready for this to become the new rogues shouldn't have sneak attack? I I don't think it's enough of a change that it's going to become that. Maybe, but I don't think so. I feel like it is. Look, there are enough shit takes in the world where I feel like this is going to pop up at some point. Where someone's gonna be like, "No, this is too powerful. I'm not gonna let my bards do this." But what's? It's not that more. It's not that much more powerful than it was before, though. Lay shrug. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. When have these? When have these wild shit takes ever had? I any mean, logic sure, in but them? but it's not a big enough change, is what I'm saying. If it was a big change, I would say maybe, but it's not that big of a change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I get you completely, bud. Wackos on the internet, maybe not. I don't feel like wha- the wackos on the, the, the. But the thing is, the people who say sneak attack is too good don't re- don't read the rules carefully enough to to notice that bardic inspiration has changed at all. They're just gonna think it's the same fucking thing because they don't read the goddamn rules. That's why they think they should ban sneak attack. Because <laughs> they don't Fair read. Enough. Fair enough. They don't know how to read. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, I can't argue with you on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, Bardic Inspiration got better. I'm really sad they took away the healing power that Bardic Inspiration had. I feel like that was a fun idea. Oh, yeah. It was in one of the yeah, Unearthed I Arcanas. I, I did like that. A little sad that's gone, but it's okay. I'll survive. Uh, expertise is now level two rather than level three. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just got better. That's cool. Song of Rest. Jack of Jack of uh, Next. Yeah. Yeah. I just I, I I don't understand why I, I that is one of my few beefs. Why did we take out Song of Rest? I just don't get the point. What I why? I completely agree. I, I thought that was the goofiest shit. Yeah. It was a fun ability fun. people liked. It's just fun and, and it's not like it was that strong. Song of Rest was not that powerful. Like actually no. arguably it was kind of not powerful at all. Like, yeah, it, you let bards, you let rogues keep fucking thieves can't, and you yes, took away yeah, song yeah, of yeah, rest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make it make sense, <laughs> wizards. Make it make sense. Rogues still have useless ass done. thieves can't. Like, I, wizards, you got me fucked up. <laughs> like, I, I also feel like, I, I like my only beef. Literally, my only beef with Song of Rest is the name. I just want it to be called like performance of rest or something like that. That's my only beef. Mm-hmm. Just because not necessarily all bards. We literally have a college of dance bard. So like clearly not all bards sing or do music. So like calling it song of rest, I didn't like. But other than that was like, just why did you just keep it in there? Just let them keep it. There's no reason to take it out. Like what was the benefit of taking it out? If you're playing in my game, yep. you get to keep song of rest. Because <laughs> there's just no point. Like, it's not even like they replaced it or they took it out because it was too strong. Like, there was no reason to take it out. It wasn't hurting anyone. Okay, they get three things at level two. Whatever. Who cares? Jesus. <laughs> it's fun to uh, see you molding for once. That's yeah. That's one of my few beefs. It's one of my few beefs. It's what it really is. Um also, Jack of All Trades got nerfed, but like, whatever. It's fine. I'm not that worried about it. <laughs> what does it do now? I actually don't know. Uh, it works the same. You just can't add it to initiative bonus. Oh, all right. Because you can. So you add half your proficiency bonus to an ability check you make that uses a skill proficiency you lack. The key word there being skill proficiency, which you don't have proficiency in initiative. It used to just say. I forget how it was worded, but it, it used to apply to initiative. Now it doesn't apply to initiative. 
I, d I think that's fine. Whatever. Because honestly, the initiative thing, I think, was an unintended consequence of how they worded it and was not what they wanted it to do. So, yeah. Probably, yes. Oh, the wording was to an ability check you make that doesn't already include your proficiency bonus. That was the wording. Got it. Uh, but either way, yeah. So it doesn't add to initiative. Technically a nerf, but like a minute nerf. So fine. Yeah, not a huge one. Nothing really to write home about on that. Yeah. Up next, we got Font of Inspiration level five. And this is unabiotic. Yes. Oof. This is pretty sick. Got buffed. It lets you burn spell slots to regain inspirations. That's pretty cool. Uh, Wait, what? Oh. Yes, yes, you can expand a spell slot to regain it. Yes, yes, that was not the ability I was thinking of. Yes, but yeah, yeah, that is fun. I'm a fan of it. It really makes, if you're like, you know, if you are the full-on support throwing out inspo bard, it will be very difficult for you to run out of it now, which is cool. Pretty much. It's also no you action required, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, you just do it. You just do it. So if you, like, Basically, your bardic inspiration hits zero and you just start using spell slots instead. No action. You just you just throw it out like there's no conversion love, or anything. I love the idea that, you know, you're the, the fighter just failed a saving throw or something. And you just look at the DM and you have like a, you're using a stack of dice for inspirations and you just reach out and go, I'm taking the back. <laughs> uh, but you can't. It's like no action. required. I'm taking the fucking back. <laughs> but more importantly, Isaiah, the most important change to all of Bard. Motherfucking counter, counter, charm. counter charm, baby. It's actually <laughs> useful now. It doesn't suck it's hot dick balls. <laughs> if you or a creature within 30 feet of you fails a saving throw and gets an effect that applies the charm or the frightened condition, you can take a reaction to cause the saving throw to be re-rolled and the new roll has advantage. I'm actually going to use this ability now. It's actually quite good. Actually now. Quite good. Yeah, My I, one beef is I, it gives you advantage as opposed to an auto save. I always thought that was a little odd, but fine. Whatever. Yeah. Although I guess it's uh, unlimited. So I guess that's the reason, actually, because you just get it every single turn. Yeah, that's probably why it's not. I'm not uh, now that I'm thinking about it. Actually, yeah. You know what? If the trade off is auto success or every single turn, I can use my reaction for it. I'll take the every single turn one. I'm not going to lie. I laughed because when I when I read the video or when I li when I read, read the, the video, video, fuck me. When I listened to the video, I was like, this is for Josh. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> this is a Josh. Hell yeah, device. dude. I have always said counter charm is one of those abilities where conceptually I love it. And it was so fucking bad before that you literally could not only did nobody use it. You basically couldn't use it because it was so bad because you had to preemptively know for a fact that the enemy was going to try and charm you. And like, how are you ever going to do that? And if the GM wanted to be a major dick, you could be like, all right, I'm going to activate. I'm, first of all, it also took an action. I'm going to burn my action to turn on my counter charm. And the GM goes, all right, I just won't cast any spells that require charming or anything. So uh, have fun, bud. <laughs> you know, like if they really want yeah. it. It's like... Yeah, it's very, all right, we'll fuck you very yeah, much. Yeah, it's like, like, not only was it a fucking useless ability, it just, just literally, you like basically couldn't use it. <laughs> it was beyond useless. It was in the realm of it didn't fucking work. Yeah, the, the only viable situation, it was like in season one of Critical Role, when they hear the siren song and Scanlan's like, ah, yeah, I yeah. can finally use this. Yes, and then never again. And then never again, yeah. Uh, like, oh, those are sirens? Cool. <laughs> yeah, I. <clears throat> it's so fucking funny. <laughs> okay, so I'm curious. I, I, I have to ask. So, Counter Charm Bussin. So, the new magical secrets. I just want to know how you feel. Um. On one end, they're trying to enforce these protections. Yes. Good. Correct. On the other, it seems like they don't give a fuck about niche protection anymore in some ways, shapes, and forms. So why? Um, I have an I have a like kind of a, an oddly specific take. You tell me yours. I I think it's okay. I don't play. I have played bards before. I will probably probably play them in the future. But they're like 
not even in my top five favorite classes. So this doesn't affect me too much. Okay, so whenever you reach a bard level, so this is the new magical secrets that I'm reading from the definitely legitimate copy I have. Uh, <laughs> Book of Forbidden Knowledge. Yeah, the, but yes, I'm reading the Necronomicon. Whenever you reach a bard level, including this level, this, oh, uh, you get it at level 10, uh, including this level, and the prepared spells number in the bard, fi- the, Jesus, and the prepared spells number in the bard feature table increases, you can choose any of your new prepared spells from the bard, cleric, druid, and wizard spell list, and the chosen spells count as bard spells, for you. Uh, see a classes section for a spell list. In addition, whenever you replace a spell prepared for this class, you can replace it with a spell from those lists. So, what this means is, essentially, once you hit level 10, you are a bard, a cleric, a druid, and a wizard all at the same time. Automatically. Not, you have to pick two spells and then you commit to them, or like you have to stick, you just get all four of those classes spell lists as your spell list. And because a bard is a prepared caster now, you can replace those prepared spells from those lists. So you just get whatever the fuck you want, which is kind of crazy. So on what uh, on now, some people may have heard that list and gone wait a minute but isn't this less spell choices technically and the answer is yes because you can only choose cleric druid and wizard spells on top of your normal bard spells whereas before magical secrets was you could choose two spells from any you could choose any spell in the entire game so what this means now is you can't take uh you can't take Warlock spells or Paladin spells or Ranger spells. Uh, you can only take Cleric, Druid, Wizard. But you get the entirety of Cleric, Druid, Wizard. You don't have to pick. So if you... Because before the way Magical Seekers works, you could have picked two spells that were kind of shit and you didn't know they were shit and you were kind of stuck with them. Uh, you did get additional Magical Seekers later, but you, know, you were still stuck with your like two shitty choices at the beginning. Now... You could just change out whatever prepared spell you have. So basically, you have more versatility for a slightly more controlled spell list. Uh, I think this is better. Uh, no, it absolutely. You have. I don't even think you put it into like good enough work. You have exponentially for for more versatility. Four spell lists is insane. Also, one of those spell lists is fucking wizard. <laughs> Yeah. Which is insane, dude. You are cock dick balling so, I th- with your spell choice. You you can't do things like a bard who casts Fine Steed. You can't cast Eldritch Blast. You can't cast Armor of Agathis. You can't cast Divine Smite. You can't use, uh, um, what's it called? Volley Shot or whatever. Or no, what's it? Conjure, Conjure Barrage from Conjure Ranger. Barrage. Yeah. You know, there are certain things that people like to take on Bard that you can't take anymore. And you are missing out on those. But for the added versatility, I think it's worth it. And and this might seem like a little bit of a weirdly hot. This is where I get into my slightly specific take on this. In terms of flavor, personally, when I think of the flavor of what Magical Secrets is which is the idea that the bard is so well learned that they can pick up from all these other classes. I always felt like the spells that they should be picking up are in the realm of wizard and cleric, not as druid. I was a little iffy on, but like wizard and cleric always felt like thematically the most on brand. Cause if you imagine a bard who travels around the world and he goes to the library and he reads up about all these new spells, right? You think of wizard spells. And then the other idea you might have is the bard who goes to like live at a monastery. So he picks up cleric spells. The idea of a bard, like, picking up warlock spells because what they like had tea with the with your patron or something at some point right that feels weird so like thematically yeah, a little out of place cleric druid and wizard feel right like in terms of the spell list they have access to it feels correct to me you know what i mean mm-hmm. i'm sure people will not like that but whatever <laughs> yeah, i mean you'll live 
You know what the biggest problem with this this ability is though now? The way they've changed it? Hmm. Bro, the analysis paralysis is gonna be insane. Oh no, it's gonna be enormous. I don't it's, know. Whatever Druid had, it's gonna be that but worse. Bro, I don't know how I, like I'm a I'm a skilled I'm a well I'm a I'm a well seasoned 5e player. I'm a well seasoned tabletop player. I'm a big fucking nerd about tabletop. I look at that and go, all right, that's kind of intimidating. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little, you got me fucked up. That's but, a uh, lot of fucking spells that I can choose from. It's really cool because if I want to play a specific, like if I want to play a support bard, now I have access to the cleric spell list. Oh my God, so many support spells that you didn't necessarily, like you could get them before with magical secrets, but now you can take even more. You can basically play a bard with no bard spells and get only cleric spells. And you're this weird, like bard cleric priest guy, right? Like that's sick, but oh man, it, this might be, bard have, might have become the least new player friendly class in the entire game now. It's up there. I think it probably sure. I think it was probably up there before. I think it I think it to, I think it is the top one now. <laughs> yeah, probably. Cuz who cuz like what cuz everybody's like, "Oh, wizard's hard to play because wizard has a big spell list." Well, <laughs> about that. What if I told you? What if I told you I got wizard spell list and more? <laughs> so, yeah, magical secrets. Kind of crazy now. Kind of crazy, like comically. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, rather <laughs> now we have and then at level 18. Uh, so uh, other levels, they don't have any new fancy stuff. They get some more spells, ASI subclass feature, you know, uh, level 18 is they it jumps from magical secrets at level 10 to level 18 is your next bard specific thing. They do get stuff in between there. Uh, you get superior inspiration. I think this is really funny fucking... because this is the old bard capstone and they moved it down yeah. two levels. I really like, like that. And we kind of know we get it. <laughs> yeah. And now they bards spoilers have one of the best. Capstones one of the best capstones in, in the, the whole game, game now. <laughs> it's crazy. Fucking crazy. It's a wild how capstone. How good their new capstone is. Yeah. I damn near did a double take yeah yeah <laughs> when reading it this morning I know. uh so superior inspiration at level 18 when you roll initiative you regain expended uses of bardic inspiration until you have two if you had fewer than that that's worded really weirdly but it just means if you have zero or one you go up to two that's that's all it's like i they were that they phrased that a little strangely but yeah so basically at level 18 every fight you start with two 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 uses of bardic inspiration and you can burn spell slots on Bardic Inspiration. You basically have infinite Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> yes. Like, the chances of you running out, very slim, frankly, are hilariously low. Yeah. Uh, level 19, you get your epic boon. What, what do they recommend? The boon of recall? Uh, whenever you cast a spell of a level 1 to 4 spell slot, yes. roll a d4. And if the roll matches the spell level, you don't expend the slot. Oh, yeah, that's sure. That's fine. That's an option. All right, level 20. Ca so we were we were talking about how the you know, we were talking about not to beat the dead horse, but we were talking about Ranger and how the Ranger capstone is just, you know, biggest piece of dog shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and uh, Wizards looked at that with Bard and said, and I took that personally. <laughs> so... <laughs> Level 20 Bard Capstone is now uh, an ability called Words of Creation. You master two of the words of creation, the words of life and death. You therefore always have Power Word Heal and Power Word Kill prepared. When you cast either one of these, you can target a second creature if that creature is within 10 feet of the, sec of the first target. That's it. That, that that's all the stipulation. Buck wild, absolutely insane. Uh, power word heal and Fucking power word wild. Kill. Just just as a refresher, just in case someone's listening and doesn't remember what those spells do, because uh, they're very good, very good spells. 
Uh, so power word heal, a wave of healing energy washes out. Uh, the target regains all of his hit points. If the creature is charmed, frightened, paralyzed, or stunned, the condition ends. If the creature is prone, it can use its reaction to stand up. Uh, that's power word heal, so uh, it's a touch. So you just slap your homie on the ass, and then he slaps his other homie on the ass, and they both just get up max health. So you walk up to the barbarian and fighter, you just give them two firm smackos, and they're good to go. Uh, <laughs> and then we have uh, power word kill, which, I mean, the name kind of tells you what it does. Uh, a creature you can see with... Uh, Sorry, you utter a word of power that can compel one creature you can see within range to die instantly. If the creature you choose has 100 hit points or fewer, it dies. So you can just point at two nerds and say, you two, delete. Because, again, you can split. You can split it now. So just delete these two fucks. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's a thing. Um... Literally by I just real quick. Yeah. The 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 flavor of having power word kill is very funny. And being someone who walks around in daily life. Yes. Like you're, you're like anything could happen. Someone could just mildly annoy you. Just look at him go, no, and then just drop down. Yeah. <laughs> you just kill a random civilian with like a, with like the king of the <laughs> like you're the, like you're like, oh fuck, I don't want to pay tax all oh, the taxpayers here. No. Yep. <laughs> What happened to the taxpayer? I, I don't know. I don't know. He, he just died. I don't know, bud. That's crazy. He's just dead, mate. Yeah. I don't know. Weird. Yeah, you just you just drop someone for no particular... Like, it's so... It's just... <laughs> it's really aggressive. It's <laughs> just also a ninth level spell. So, like, you just insta-gib someone with, like, unlimited cosmic power. <laughs> you literally just input con com uh, uh, console command forward slash kill semi -quad. yeah yeah forward slash kill delete do not respawn uh yeah my own literally my only beef with this capstone and i have a feeling you probably know what i'm about to say is i just hate that they did the thing where they gave you a spell as an ability yeah it just bugs yeah, me yeah it does almost make up for it for how fucking powerful the spell is. Yes. Well, so the two things that make up for it is one, they're both really powerful and very useful spells. So that's good. The other thing that kind of makes up for it is you can modify the spells, right? Because you can make it hit mm -hmm. two targets. So that's like the fact that you're altering it makes it fun. So, you know, I'll take it. The one thing I do. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. What? If you take the meta magic feat, uh huh, and you use twin spell for power word kill, uh, I don't think you, you can't. And you're level twenty, but you, you you can't. Why? Because twin spell chain was changed. How it works? No. How does it work now? I. Basically, the way it works is if a spell can be upcast to target multiple targets you can use twin spell to effectively get the upcasted effect. So if a spell cannot, so if a spell is normally, so like haste doesn't have any upcast effect, you can't twin spell haste. Oh, that, now it, my twin spell sucks now. F it's significantly less useful, yes. I think wizards just think. That sucks. Wizards felt like it was a little too strong. It's supposed to be. It's the fucking sorcerer's whole thing. Uh, well, twin spell specifically, I guess they just thought was too much. I don't know. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so you can't twin spell. Love you can't the insta giving four. People. No, you can't four. You can't insta give four people. As funny as that would be, just you just cast testicular torsion on four people. <laughs> as as amazing as that would be, no, unfortunately, yeah. Oh, you didn't fucking ah. You didn't watch Helsing abridged, but there's a whole bit. Where he's deal like when they go to the Vatican and Alucard fucking kicks the door in and the security guards get in front of him. He's like, out of my way. And they just explode. <laughs> <laughs> it's that. <laughs> uh, subclasses, though. Um, subclass is interesting. I don't really know how to feel about dance, dance? and glamour being two different things. I mean, so, yeah. Because they literally swapped some of Glamour's old abilities onto dance. 
Yeah, so for those who don't know, we're getting an entirely new bard subclass called College of Dance, and it's basically, I mean, it's the dancer bard, but the important thing is it's the bard that hits you with unarmed strikes, and they have unarmored Yes, defense. you're a 14 dancer now. Yes, well, 14 dancers use chalk rooms, but kind of. Yeah, they have the shock room, but still. Yeah, you're the you're the monk. You're the monk bard now. You have like punchy things uh, and you have unarmored defense and you can use your like, I think you can use your bardic inspiration to uh, add to your damage and stuff. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole subclass, I think. But point being, I think dance is super sick. I like it a lot. Uh, I actually might play. I, I probably will play dancer and I do like I love the idea of it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Glamour being like a heavy metal rocker, like the fucking yeah. the art that they used in the video for the glamour bard being like this glam punk, like heavy metal rock elf I mean, lady. I was like, this is this fucks. So <laughs> I mean, that's not just the art in the video. That's the art for the glamour bard in the book. I. What? Oh, God. What is that? That old meme? It was a. Uh, it was like Bard of Death or something. What was it called? Paladin posted it forever ago. <laughs> Cleric of Metal. The gods made heavy metal, and they said that it was good. They said to play it louder than hell, and we promised that we would. It's just that. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. Yeah. So, it, uh, glamour bard, punchy, punchy guy. Um. You're also kind of a little bit of supporty stuff. Um. Your level 14 ability is an interesting one. Uh, when subjugated to an effect that makes uh, allows you to make a deck save throw to only take half damage, you, inst- you have invasion. You instead take no damage if you succeed on the saving throw and only half if you fail. If any creature within five feet of you are making the same deck save, you can share this benefit with them for that save. So uh, that's that's fun. You, can, you have evasion and you can bequeath evasion to people next to you, which is... Kind of crazy because like the dance bar just squads up with the paladin next to them and just unkillable wall right there. That's why I said 14, because you literally get to pick your dance partner. You do pick a day. Yes, you do have tandem footwork. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes, you give it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. You can give everyone a when you roll initiative, you expend to use your bardic inspiration die. If you don't have the incapacity condition, if you do so. Roll your Bardic Inspiration die. You and each ally within 30 feet of you, you can see or hear you, gain a bonus to initiative equal to your num- equal to the number rolled. So, yeah. You just give everyone initiative bonus. Yeah, it's quite a crazy subclass. Uh, it's it's something. Uh, Glamour Bard. I think changed quite a bit, right? I'm gonna, yeah. Uh, gonna, so I never it, liked Glamour Bard. It actually Bard. has the most stuff. So I didn't until now. I'm a real fair enough. So uh, they replaced the enthralling performance ability with beguiling magic, yeah, yeah, yeah. which adds charm person and mirror image to your prepared spell list and allows you to give people the charmed or frightened effect on anyone who sees you cast enchantment or illusion spells within 60 feet. Mantle of inspiration now gives you temporary HP equal to two times the number rolled on your bardic inspiration dice instead of just a flat number. And Mantle of Majesty now regains uh, can now be regained by expending a third level or higher spell slot. Finally, Unbreakable Majesty can cause the attacker to miss instead of just changing targets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So quite beefy. I will. Oh, I did. I did. This is a little bit of a backtrack. Uh, I forgot. Uh, One thing I do, I will say uh, as much as I do like the new Bard Capstone, I do kind of wish thematically it had a little bit of more of a performance vibe. That's one thing. It, it it's very spellcasty. I wish it had some kind of like I'm doing a performance thing going on with it. But for glamour, no, just for Bard, like the for for the the words of oh. creation. Mm-hmm. I just wish. I the main reason I think about it is because Tales of the Valiant has this thing where Bardic where Bards can start a performance. And it it's basically it, it's it's actually the 14 dancer thing where you do the dance and you do the steps and then it buffs everyone. They do this like performance thing and then they can use actions during their performance to like throw out different buffs based on their type of performance they're doing. Uh, and it just made me wish that that was like a thing in 5e. You know, I I don't disagree with you. I 
as much as I want to play heavy metal rocker chick uh, bard, I don't fully want them to be straight up performance of performers. I like when bard is like, you know, I'm also I might be a spy and I'm a bard or, you know, just a seeker of knowledge and I'm a bard. Yeah, you know? but the subclass can do that. Yeah, I guess. That's how I think about it. Um, after that, we have College of Lore. Which got some... It just got buffed. It's yeah. just better. Just uh, better, pretty much. Yeah. So, Cutting Words uh, is... It ignores the immunity to charm on targets. Peerless Skill does not expend the inspiration if you fail to use it. Yeah, Peerless Skill And Magical Discoveries... Allows you to regain the spells you choose when you gain a bard level. So it's just better. Well, so Magical Discoveries is... So College of Lore used to get additional, mag like, extra magical secret choices. But obviously, because of the way new magical secrets work, that doesn't work anymore. So, Magical Discoveries now, you learn two spells of your choice. These spells can be from the Cleric, Druid, or Wizard spell list, or any combination thereof. Uh, a spell you ch the a spell you choose must be a cantrip or a spell for which you have spell slots as shown in your bard feature table. You always have the chosen spells prepared, and whenever you gain a bard level, you can replace one of the spells with another spell that meets these requirements. So essentially, what Magical Discoveries is doing is doing exactly what Magical Secrets does, but giving you two spells that are guaranteed always prepared that don't count against your other prepared. So you essentially get like two extra spells on top of your usual stuff. Yes. It's arguably not as like, it's sort of less effective than it was before, but because of the way magical secrets works now, it doesn't matter as much. But uh, yeah, I mean, quite frankly, College of Lore is uh, uh, still the most boring of the Bard subclasses uh, and uh, they didn't fix that. So, Sorry, hot take. You know, it's sad because I do actually like Lore Bard the best, but uh, yeah, fair enough. I just think it's the least interesting. It does the least, you know, but it is also kind of the default subclass. So I I'm not necessarily surprised by the fact that it does the least. I I will say, though, I, I hate that. I, I hate that. That's a thing. I, I, I'm not saying you're wrong because you're right. That is a thing. I just hate that it is a thing. What do you mean? Like the the, the default platonic ideal is the least interesting Oh, I almost yes. feel like you want the opposite or you want to make it yeah. the most hype because you want people to really feel yeah. the vibe. Yep. Um, but uh, fuck me, I guess. Also, I, I don't know. I've always found cutting words to be a really strange ability because nothing about cutting words says lore bard to me. You know? Just doesn't. I, I, I guess the idea is that you're, you're literally just like so smart you know how to throw a diss yes right yeah i i mean it, it's either that or you're you're so smart you can see the opening maybe yeah you're like oh their footwork is sloppy dodge to your left maybe yeah i don't know Cutting. you're being like you're being a sassy bitch no matter what but it's yeah. not like eloquence where you're literally just roasting someone yeah it's a weird one i don't know god i hope eloquence like gets your mom's a, yeah. <laughs> mom's a hoe you're just not hitting people with that <laughs> Lastly, uh, College of Valor, um, which is, I mean, College of Valor was like cool before. Uh, it's kind of just cooler now because they kind of smush swords barred into Valor. Is that what they did? Sort of. Yeah. Because as far as I'm aware, it just gives you an extra. T did, did you not get extra attack? Uh, Back in the Dizzy? So, uh, let me, I, I, I will double check that. I think checking. You did get extra attack. Yes. Uh, what I'm so what I'm talking about, it's not a hundred percent. There's just a couple of things they they kind of smooshed in there. Um, so uh, combat inspiration. Uh, a creature that has the bark inspiration die from you can do one of the following effects. When the creature is hit by an attack roll, the creature can use its reaction to roll the bark inspiration die and add their number rolled to their AC against that attack, potentially causing the attack to miss. Uh, that's effectively something that Swords Bard could do on itself. Um, oh, true. And then the that's the defensive option. Then the offensive option is immediately after a creature hits a target with an attack roll, the creature can roll a Bark Inspiration die and add the number to the damage. 
Uh, that is the thing only Valor Bard can do. Add two damage rolls. Mm. Uh, and then martial training. You can use your weapon as a spell casting focus. <laughs> Would you believe that wasn't there before? I remember that being something I believe you were upset about. Yes, because it's because it's kind of goofy. That's kind of why I if I had that zigzags probably would have been a valor bard and not a swords bard. Mm. Uh, and yes, you get extra attack. Um, also, you can do the the Eldritch Knight thing, which I don't think you could do before. Uh, you can attack twice. In addition, you can cast one of your cantrips that is a casting kind of an action in place of one of those attacks. So. Yeah, you could do the Eldritch Knight, like, attack cantrip. Um, and then your last one is battle magic. Uh, after you cast a spell that has a cast damage an action, you can make one attack with a weapon as a bonus action. So, extra attack lets you do, like, attack cantrip, and then battle magic lets you do, like, you know, uh, attack f- f- fireball. <laughs> <laughs> so. Or no, sorry. It lets you do fireball attack. Technically. But you get the idea. Uh, so yeah, they kind of they kind of combined it with Swords Bard, presumably because Swords Bard, you know, not in the book. Who knows if Swords Bard is actually going to make it? But it seems like I don't know. Swords Bard kind of uh, not like kind of negated a little bit now with the new Valor Bard. There's not as much reason to play. I mean, Swords still has the flourishes. Um, so there's that and like the two weapon fighting style options, but yeah, swords bard a little less relevant now. So hopefully if it comes back, it'll be, you know, a little more interesting then they'll add a little something, a little spice, a little something, something to it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm pretty happy with the new, right. new valor bard. I'm like, yes, I would absolutely play this. What are you, you what are you all? Okay. What are you all writing? No. So now, now that we're done, I, I wanted to talk to you about it. Oh, I had this thought. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. I said I was going to talk about the end of Rogue. I'm talking about now. Okay. So when you see things like all the physical fighters getting maneuvers. Yes. The Bard getting unlimited access to those specific spell uh, spell sheets. Yes. It really feels like they're trying to curtail multi-classing. They're not going to tell you not to multi-class, but they're, it, it seems to the point where they're, they're desperate to get you to not multi-class now, which is very interesting. And I get why. I I talked about it last time. I get it. Multi-classing is a bitch and a half to balance for. You basically can't do it. So it makes sense that they're trying to do it. But I didn't expect the approach to be this aggressive. You know what I mean? Because one of the biggest reasons why people, like any physical fighter, would multi-class... You, you, honestly, I think a lot of people would expect you to multi-class champion, but I feel like most people multi-class fighter or a battle master for the maneuvers. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And a big reason for why, uh, for example, clerics will multi-class or warlocks. Uh, why wizards will multi-class cleric is because they're both full casters and now you give wizards the ability to bring people back to life, which is the only thing they can't do. Um, so rather than have to deal with either of those, you play a bard, and now you can do both of those things without needing multiple. Yeah, you can bring people back to life and have the full wizards like yep, damage dealing repertoire. Yeah. So what's the what's the question here? No, nothing. I just wonder if you also noticed that. Like I know, yeah. I mean, I noticed we, we were talking about it, but it like it's become. I am par- uh, uh, apparent to the point of like them smashing you over the head with it. I don't know that that is. I mean, there's no way to know without being in the in the design room, but I don't necessarily know that the designers were thinking, oh, we're going to add all of these cool abilities to dissuade multiclassing. I think they were just thinking to themselves, we're going to add these cool abilities and try and make the class feel like it's truest self. It's most like actually Jeremy Crawford literally says this, you know, we want the fighter to feel like the fighteriest fighter who's ever fightered, you know, like that kind of a thing. And I think it's just a logical progression of if you're trying to push the classes like a class's fantasy 
more and more as much as you can, you're going to end up in a space where you give them more little toys along the way because how else are you going to do it? And I don't know that it was it was like a malicious let's remove multiclassing thing. I think it's sort of just a byproduct. But I do think there is a little bit of discouraging multiclassing. But I also think that part of the reason that they're trying to discourage multiclassing a little bit is just is not even because they see it as a major problem in the game so much as they're kind of like. Like, think about it from a designer. I designed 20 levels of fighter and everybody only ever plays with five of those levels, right? Because people just multi-class to get like second, you know, action surge, second win, boom, boom, done or whatever. I would be really annoyed. It's like we spent all this time designing the entire class and nobody uses the entire class. You know, everyone just does the two level fighter dip or three level fighter dip. So, you know putting some cooler shit a little down the road to try and encourage people to actually play the thing I designed, you know, like I think a lot of it comes down to, I think it's a combination of we're trying to invoke the class fantasy as much as we can. And we would like you to actually play the thing we made, (laughs) you know, I suppose. So I I do think it's interesting that we haven't talked about fighter yet. I'm pretty sure. Fighters don't have any innate maneuvers outside of battle master. They kind of do sort of through through weapon mastery. They kind of do. Actually, I not enough because every fighter, every physical fighter has weapon masteries. Yes, they get more. I don't think it's well. So the difference is that the fighter gets weapon masteries that are not tied to the weapons and they get to use those whenever they want. Do they? I I have not heard that. Yes, because one of their abilities they get later down the road is they get. They get a couple, they get like three, I forget which three it is, but they get three weapon masteries to utilize that do not matter what weapon you are using. I don't Hmm. remember what they are. Uh, Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here we go. Tactical master. Uh, when you attack with a weapon, uh, with a weapon you've cho- chosen as part of your weapon mastery feature, you can swap out the mastery p- property or push, sap, or slow. Um, yeah. Uh, swapping out the properties, blah, blah, blah. and this is like every a- attack, by the way. It's not like uh, limited in any way. You can just swap it out. So you always have push, sap, or slow. Um, and then they also got... It was like one other thing that I can't remember. Oh, yeah. Tactical shift. Uh, With tactical shift, using your second wind allows you to move up to half your speed as a bonus action and you don't provoke opportunity attacks. So. Yeah. Yeah, So they have a couple of things that sort of are that. It's not quite the same as what the barbarian and the rogue got but they do have some stuff there um yeah no i i just don't think it's enough just flat out it's not i think it is because that's that's all you get well you they're no, like no matter what rogue you are you get those maneuvers no matter what barbarian you are you get those maneuvers the only maneuvers you get and they are maneuvers they are just battle master maneuvers that everyone else gets you only get as a we'll talk about this. I guess this will be the episode next time. I mean, yes, the fighter, the time. fighter gets the ones that are intrinsically tied to the weapon mastery. So it's a little bit different, but essentially, essentially the reason that happened is because Crawford was like, you know, we want fighter to be the more straightforward class. That's a little easier to play because people liked that. It's basically what he said. I guess, uh, because he literally says in the video, uh, a lot of people have wanted us to uh, to get rid of Battlemaster and make that part of the core fighter. And we considered that, but we came to the conclusion that we didn't want to do that because people said they wanted a more like simple fighter option. Hmm. So, but he says they did consider it and it almost did happen. 
I don't even feel like you have to get rid of Battlemaster. Make it more. Well, and just like let Battlemaster have all of the maneuvers, not have to pick a list. Well, the 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 basic the basic gist was we people people wanted to have a fighter that they could just not have to think as hard about. And so if you gave the base fighter Battlemaster, then you sort of inherently have to make decisions. Otherwise, you're being like suboptimal. It's such a funny idea. You, if you don't, we don't want to have to make decisions. <laughs> look, a lot of what is this thinking thing that look, I don't want? A lot, a lot of people don't play tabletop in that kind of way. You know, a lot of people play it very, I, like, very, not mindlessly, but very. Um, people, a lot of people play tabletop, uh, uh, sort of like automatic. You know what I mean? Like they just they do the basic like they the G they say I would like to hit the goblin and they hit the goblin and like they say I would like to climb the wall and they climb the they just they just say to the GM can I do X Y or Z and then they let the GM figure out the hard stuff and they just kind of go like that you know like a lot of people play very like on autopilot almost I guess it I don't, I don't really got anything else I don't know I just idea that it's like i don't want to think i just it's, look that's what people want not everybody obviously i, I think it's goofy I don't even, i'm not even saying no you have to play optimally you need to know your perfect rotation it's just like nah it's too much yeah two whole things that's too many it's too many that's too whole too many things. i mean yeah yeah there's an argument to be made there i don't know i get it to a degree I still, my argument is still that f that uh, barbarian should be the brain dead one, not the fighter. But you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I agree, hundred <laughs> percent. But and now they are arguably more complicated than the fighter. Uh, a little bit, yeah. They're a little more. I wouldn't say much, but a little bit, yeah. They're not unbearably more complicated. Anyway. Yeah, I mean that's that's basically all I got. Uh, you got any 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 closing remarks? Any riveting information? No, I mean Bard and Rogue didn't necessarily get the craziest overhaul in comparison to like Monk, for example. But uh, they got basic. I had basically nothing that they got. Do I have any major complaints about? So that's pretty. That's pretty cool. And yeah. one of my favorite classes basically got a better, in my opinion, across the board and didn't. You know what? The other thing, too, is Bard got better, but I don't feel like Bard got exceptionally more powerful. Right. Like they got. a. They've, oh, I do that. The spell less thing. That's but that's, that's not actually powerful. that much more powerful. That's arguably less powerful, though, because there's certain spells that people are taking that they're not going to be able to take anymore. And. Like the the spell list thing is going to give you options, but I don't think it's going to make you inherently more busted, you know, because you could take the spells that were going to make you busted. You could still take if they're on the wizard, druid or cleric list and the spells that were like and then the, the spells that were going to make you busted that were on the other list, you like can't take now. So it's like sort of kind of a nerf, you know? No, I yeah, no, I I know I don't agree because I I think wizard and cleric have the strongest spells in the game by far. Right, but what I'm saying so is so the ability that you can cast up to. But you could already take them before. What is it? No, you you could, but you were limited. Like you're like, oh well, we don't really have a we don't have a healer, so we can't bring people back to life. But I have this really interesting build idea. Now it's like, well, I don't build is build. It, it it you know it is what it is. Oh, someone died. All right, let me uh, raise dead. Sure, but you're you still can just do that. you're still Here, limited a dead. by preparation, spell preparation, right? So like, it's not, it's not like, heart blanche everything. No, but if you can get up to raise dead, that means you have up to a week to bring someone back. So preparation is not really an issue. And again, the wizards' damaging spells are the strongest in the game. And no, you don't have access to up to ninth level of those spells. Fair enough, but you do get up to I believe fifth level. Which is still chunky. Wait, you absolutely have ninth level. Oh, that makes it even more wild. Bards are, bards are full casters. Why would you not have ninth level? 
because uh, the magical secrets is what the you get those. What? I was it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't played Bard in a while, but it's magical secrets that gives you the other spell list stuff. Yeah. I thought there was a limit on what magical secret spells you could grab. No. Oh, then never mind. There never has then, been. Yeah, forget what I just said. <laughs> that makes them even stronger. There never ha That's my point. There never has been a limit. The only I don't I, you couldn't as far as I remember, you couldn't swap your magical secret spells. Uh, you couldn't like, um, no, you couldn't like swap them on a rest, but in terms of the, but th so that's what I mean, right? Is like, you could say, oh, well today I want to cast simulacrum tomorrow. I want to cast meteor swarm. Sure. And yeah. then you can just do that. Uh, now you can. Yes. Because well, but you also weren't a prepared caster before either. So that's part of that too. No, no, you weren't, but that, uh, I think that's, that makes you even stronger is that you're a prepared caster. But you also you have access to the full breadth of your ability. But again, you have further versatility, but liter but a but a, a smaller list to choose from. You know what I'm saying? Yes, but I think in this instance, the versatility is going to win over the sheer number of spells. Like, no, you don't get stuff like uh, Eldritch Blast. No, you don't get uh, uh, stuff like what the f uh, like Conjure Barrage. But you can. You have full access to the highest level of magic whenever you want, given that you have 24 hours of preparation from the three strongest casters in the game. That's I mean, yes, you have. It I think it's the, worth its weight in gold. You have it from the full casters. Yes. But yeah, I think that's worth its weight in gold. I don't know that it, it doesn't feel like such a crazy. I, it doesn't feel like such a crazy buff that bars just like out of control OP at this point. You know, like it's it's. It's a buff in a, it's like a side grade. I don't even know if I can call it 100% a buff or a nerf. It's like a side grade kind of thing. Because also at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you could swap them out, but you need to be prepared and you need to know, like, sure, if you know we're going to fight the bad guy tomorrow and I have and I know what the bad guy's weakness is, I can grab specific spells. But if we're getting jumped in a dungeon by enemies I didn't predict, then it doesn't really matter because I prepared what I prepared for the day. You know what I mean? So like, it's, it's not such a, if you could like swap the spells with like a minute of rest or whatever, or something like that, that would be wild. But because it's on a long rest, you essentially, you know, you're, you're beholden to similar sort of limitation in the way that cleric and wizard is. And like, yes, you have more, but you do still need, to have that preparation for stuff like the true resurrection. Yes, absolutely. You could be like, well, Jim died. I'll resurrect him tomorrow. <laughs> you, you can do that for sure. Well, so I put it, I put forth, put forth to you this old bard. You couldn't choose at all. You picked your spells and your spells were your yeah, spells. Yeah, you That's all you choose. had. That's true. Yes. With the, uh, with the optional rules, you got some ability got to some choose. swapping. Yes. But now that you, you just, that's just removed. But also <laughs> everyone became a, pre a prepared caster. So they did. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm not saying too. that Bard is like unstoppable best class in the game, but I, I do wholeheartedly believe it is far more mechanically powerful than it ever has been. I mean, it's more powerful, but I don't know if it's as crazy as it initially seems like. It. I think it is wholeheartedly other than like the capstone. It's insane stone. how strong I think it is, especially. Yeah, especially with the capstone. But we've said you before, everyone should have stupid level 20 capstones anyway. They they should, but they don't. But and given that but the rogues, the though, has rogues is good. Don't get me wrong. Rogues is good. But Bard has effectively. Three ninth level spell slots. No. Effectively, no, no, because you have power word kill or power word heal. You can transfer that to another person as if you cast it twice. Yeah, so you can bring two people back to full or just straight up murder two people who have less than 100 HP. But only once a day. Only once a day. But that's still two targets to a single target ninth level spell. So uh, and they have two, you have your so own have, ninth level spell. No, 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 no. <laughs> it uses your ninth level spell slot still. It's not free. Oh. It's not free. Fair enough. I didn't thought about that. Yeah. So, yeah, 
you have at least two ninth level spell slots, which is more than anybody else has. You effectively have a spare one, but it's a spare spell slot that's very limited in how it can be utilized. Because I still think it's pretty good. No, it's, no, I know. I'm just saying, yes, it's a second target, but it's also a second target that's within 10 feet of the first one. And it's only heal or kill. It's not, you know, it's not too. It's not a wholehearted another ninth level spell slot. You know what I mean? Like. It's a very limited secondary ninth level spell slot. <laughs> it's like one and a half. It is, but I it is limited, but it's very limited. The fact that it's it's any uh, this game is about killing monsters, fam. No, I know, we but agree, it's still very limited. That. It's not it's not like you could go, I cast Wish and then I cast Meteor Swarm, or I cast Wish and then I cast Simulacrum or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's not that level of crazy. Because like if a wizard, no, but in a if a wizard had literally two ninth levels, like literally two, they could do even more ins like wildly insane shit. No, yes, they could, but that's what I'm saying. They have effectively two, which is one more than everyone else gets. Sort of. It's 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 two with stipulation, but it's still effectively two. But it is also precise stipulation. Like it's pretty precise stipulation. <laughs> you know. Yes, it's precise. I, th I think of it this way. If if a big chunk of the game I mean, is taking shit's health away. Right, but also where you can't get much better than an instant kill. Uh, Yes, and although. It's, yeah, the stipulation of 100 HP or less. That's a lot of HP. That's a lot of that's HP, lot. but that's a pretty big stipulation when you don't know what the HP bar is. Uh, True, right? You don't. You're fighting a creature with 500 HP and you don't know what the HP bar is. That's a pretty big stipulation. Somewhat, yeah. Because you, you're gambling. But and in, there's no return on your gamble. In, if it's if you fail, you fail. No, but inversely, you're like, oh, well, you know, we've only dealt like 200 damage to this guy. He's the final boss. He's probably not going to die with the power word kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You but can, the barbarian's been getting very barbarian and fighter got fucked yeah, the last heal, round the by the heal is, swarm. The heal is, yeah, the heal is easy to throw out very reliably. The power word kill is a little more, you got to be a little more wary. And you only get one or the other, too. You do get one or the other. That's fair. That's, again, stipulation, but still effectively two. Practically, it's two. I'll call it one and a half. I, I'm fine. I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> yeah, one point five. I think it's much stronger. It's very good. This is. These are probably like all, all I'm saying is it's a it's like a reasonable amount of power creep. It, yes, a reasonable amount to what you would expect from a character that can get to level 20. I yes. Yes. Well, and, and just, what you'd expect and what you'd want. And also like the magical secrets power creep. It's like, again, I would say a, re a relatively reasonable amount of power creep. Yeah. And then they also got more bardic inspirations, but those aren't like that doesn't feel like that much of a power creep. I mean, I guess it technically is, but you were running out of bark inspiration so rarely anyway. That's like, you know, kind of like rage. It's like barbarians can get a lot more rages now, but so many people were not running out of their rages anyway because of the way people play the game that it's like it's a power creep, but like it's barely a power creep. You know, do you think I? I don't know. I feel like both Ant and Brett ran out of inspirations a lot, even at the end of our campaign. Uh, they ran out sometimes, but I also kind of intentionally went out of my way to, like, put you guys through the paces a little bit more and, like, actually have more than one encounter a day. You know, hmm. that was kind of a conscious decision on my part, whereas most games don't play that way. Um. They did run out from time to time for sure. Mostly though, a lot of the time they were running out when they were using their inspiration abilities that were used like for their self abilities. Which I'm that's yeah, that's true. Blanking on what those were specifically, but you know. Um uh for Brett it was his spirit calling, and then for Ant it was his roasting. Oh yeah, roasting. Right, no, it was a. Uh... Oh, you're right. Oh yeah, he was he was an yeah. eloquence bard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eloquence bard. Yeah. Anyway. 
but yes, if you're the kind of table that plays one fight a day, kind of don't matter. No, you will. That, yeah, if that's the case, you will effectively not run out anytime soon. <laughs> anyway, we could get, just go back and forth all day on this. Uh, follow us on the Twitterverse. That's all I have. Yeah. Also, I don't know. Drink water. I should do more of that. You should. I haven't drank a whole lot of water recently. Especially because you yeah. live in the South. Do you know it was 100 degrees today and it felt like 116? Oh my God. It is so hot. I uh, think my compressor stopped working today because at one point my, my AC, which I just replaced, by the way, just fucking shit the bed. Oh. Yeah. 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 Texas. Yeah. All right. Bye. I'm out of here.